Man, so why why are we so hyped up? Because us hotheads in a few days are gonna hop in our cars, drive six hours to San Jose, California, and we're gonna watch Junoon live on stage after 14 freaking years. Has it really been 14 years? Decade and a half. Last episode of our talked about the Ellie Coliseum concert. That was the last time we saw, and that was the end of their sort of their era. Um, that was 2005. That was 2005. Oh, yes, it was yeah. 2005. I think the last show they probably played together was in 06. What was the album that they had just released? I think it was Diva, right? Diva was out in 03. Well, this is funny because okay, so I mean, we're gonna talk about you know why we're so excited about the reunion, but you know. Why don't we go a little further back and talk about why they actually broke up? Um, <laughs> I'm gonna start from there, you know, because a, <laughs> lot, a lot happened yeah, between okay. that period, you know, like. Uh, well, t- tell me, what You know, I was not as brokenhearted as I was about Vital Signs' breakup, mm. and I'll tell you why. Vital Signs broke up abruptly without, you know, without having their whole bell curve, you know, with their peak and dawn and, you know, sunset. Um, they kind of ended abruptly. Junoon, I had so much Junoon already that I did not mind that these guys were pursuing other, you know, venues, other avenues to express themselves freely. You know, that that's a good and point I was, because I, I I will say that um, <clears throat> sub cheese jab wo beat jati hai na jab matlab guzar jati hai wo cheese aur aapko matlab yaad hai jati hai and you're just sort of like okay you you have these like really wonderful memories about something. They, it, it, it seems really wonderful and it's nostalgic. It's, it really, it very much is. But I will say, and I'm not sure if anybody will echo me in saying this, that I think around that time when they did end up breaking up, um, and they were already kind of declining sometime in 2003, 2004, uh, there was this feeling that I, at least I had, having listened to them for almost 10 years basically at that point, is that yaar, you know, like someone else needs to come onto the scene I and mean, we need to diversify it a little that bit. They... It's not that I took them for granted by any means. Um, a Pakistani rock band going platinum is something that I think uh, all of us need to look at as a historic sort of like moment and, and period. But right, at the same right. time, there was this feeling of like, yaar, like, you know, can we have some other like new kids on the block? And then all these guys that do, did come out in the right. early 2000s, they the same, were kind 2004 of... 2004 was a, a, a... 2003, actually. Was so, very, I mean, I was, I, was just, year. I was grateful what, for what Junoon had given me. They had given me everything. So I think Omar was probably a lot more... By the way, so, yeah, we're back here with the same panel. We got the Phenomenals of Ar Jafri. We got uh, Omar Kazi, obviously Hamad Alam, and myself, Ali Kazi. So Omar actually was probably a lot more heartbroken than I was. Is that right? Or? I mean, yeah. So the last concert I attended, I don't know if the Henry Fonda Theater concert was before the Coliseum or it, it after. It was before the Coliseum. It was I think the Henry Fonda was even before that USC one that we went yes, to. Yes, there was a USC one too. That was that, that was, was 03. I USC mean, was in 03. A so lot Henry, of people showed up, but the sound wasn't right. That that concert, I don't know. I don't really yeah, count that. Weird. But the Coliseum, <laughs> that was pretty epic. You know, the, the fireworks show up with, uh, afterwards. So my name was playing the, uh, the national anthem and everything. But yeah, at that point, you know, the sound was changing. You know, uh, right. I, I like to say that it's very easy to tell who's writing the song or who's composing the song mm. in, in Junoon's entire discography, right? Yeah. From beginning to end, you can tell which songs are Ali Azmat heavy mm. and which songs are Salman Ahmed heavy. Mm-hmm. And towards the end, 
and you can see that transition. Well, they were beginning to kind of like artistically, yes. I don't know about personally, but artistically drift uh, apart thematic, as well, right? Thematically. Thematically. Yes. I mean, Adidas would kind of wanted to do his own thing. Yes. And gyak, gyak, yeah, so you can see, like, if, if, if you see Papu Yar, which is a Junoon yeah. track, but that's got Ali Azmat written all yeah. over for it. Gerard Tvaras, you, you know, it's a Junoon track, but it's got Ali Azmat written all over for yeah. it. And you can tell Ali Azmat's uh, solo album that came out afterwards, or so it's a Social Circus, I think? Social, Social Circus, Circus came out yeah. first, 2000. And, and as a matter of fact, if you guys So you can tell it's like a similar sound from the last yeah. of Junoon to the new Val- solo Valiez, but it's a very I don't know if you sound. remember um, at the Coliseum show they were selling Social Circus and Infinity at the same time on the same book really I, I don't remember similar. that and both of them yeah. were there signing it huh uh, which is kind of amazing I don't know Infinity was out that's Salman Hamad Infinity solo album. came out around the same time I, I, I think what happened with Infinity is that they were Junoon songs that just could not become Junoon you know, album after post Divan. Well, I mean, so what? So, what? What is the inside story? I mean, that's that's from the outside, right? I think I mean, so. We can, I think Azmat we can put it together that Ali Azmat and Salman Ahmed began to drift apart in terms of like their 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 desire for what the music should look like. So this like. is what happened. Um, for so what is Brian, the inside story? Well, let's let's start with Brian. I yeah. believe had a had a divorce. Uh, he had two daughters, and he was kind of. And he was like, living, I guess not living feeling, in at the time, yeah, right? and then 9-11 had happened, so he was a little bit, you know, kind of felt out of place. So he really wanted to move back to New York. But Salman Ahmed was, was going to New York a lot, he had that UN gig, so he was spending a lot of time out there. And um, Ali Azmat, you know, he he would all, a lot of times he would get dismissed by these guys, especially Salman Ahmed. That's why you see, like Omer talked about, some songs are Ali Azmat, some songs are Salman Ahmed. Ali Azmat were probably not more than 20% of Junoon songs. So he felt like he was getting shunned a lot. So he's like, I got to do my own thing. That's why you see in Social Circus and all of Ali Azmat's material is so uh, deviated from what Junoon's sound is known to be, right? Um, so that's that's ex- actually what happened. Ali Azmat talks about it quite a bit. Like, you know, we just drifted apart because these guys were in New York. And they're like, oh, you know, we're going to record part of it here, part of it in New York and get it post-edited in New York and stuff like that. He was not feeling all that much. Um, those things were not really settling in very well with him. And then at the same time, I mean, when I look at Ali Azma's departure for, you know, wanting to be his own man, I kind of compare that to why Salman Ahmed left Vital Signs. He wanted to do his own thing, be his own man. So I would like to say that Salman or Ali Azma left Junoon for the same reason Salman left Vital Signs. Um, and, and that's... And then uh, Salman Ahmed was actually doing a lot of noble things out in the U.S. Because post 9-11 was a really difficult time. He, he's a New Yorker. He was a U.N. ambassador for something as well. He was in, yeah, a for goodwill ambassador goodwill, for yeah. uh, our was AIDS UNICEF? and some other things. For UNICEF, yes, yeah. I believe so. Right. And by the way, just goes to, also you have to include that, that they played at the U.N. At the that UN. was one of their more yeah. uh, you know, popular concerts. Yeah. So, yeah, they were definitely on the world stage at that point. And then, you know, there was also that documentary as well, um... <clears throat> yeah, he made a couple of films that were was very the potent. Mullahs and Gaga? Mullahs, uh, Rockstar and the Mullahs, which the we'll Rockstar talk about Mullahs, in yeah. detail because I, that's a subject that, you know, like I said, when we unpack Junoon, oh, there's just so much yeah, going yeah. on. And then he made this uh, other documentary called uh, It's My Country Too, um, mm. which was about, you know, civil rights and, you know, Patriot Act and uh, American Muslims, have, uh, how they were affected by it. it it's excellent films. And Salman Ahmed was doing that, which I think is very noble because... You know, as you look at Ali Azma during that whole time, this is like 2000, early 2000s on, all the way up to, you know, when, when um, Salman Ahmed moved back to Pakistan in 2012. Ali Azma's solo career, I mean, he was he was a mentor to all these guys that were coming up, all these Atif Aslams and Ali Zafar was coming up. Ali Azma was like that, that icon for them. I don't know if that's even an expression, but that's what Ali Azma was. He was like a godfather. He was like... You look at all these other artists and then you look at Ali Azmat, when you talk about Atif, Ali Zafar, Farooq, everybody, right? Ali Azmat, Alagi Nazarata in Misabman. And that's, he had a very, you know, huge commercial career. He became a brand himself. That's what he was doing. But then what was noble about what Salman was doing, and we actually went to at least two or three of these events, he was, uh, he was touring colleges, talking to Americans. American Muslims, uh, you know, white Americans, black Americans, talking to them about Pakistan, about Islam, and, you know, educating them. And he took up a teaching job in Queens uh, for that. And I, I think to leave a, uh, a limelight and a, um, a star career for something like that, I, th- I think that's a very noble cause. 
and you know there's tons of videos online about you know what uh, the kind of events that Salmana was part of very humble events you know just like any good coffee shop events that you know Zawar has been to like some of these Karim Abdul Jabbar uh, coffee shop type events where he's, he's right. talking about his books that's what Salman Ahmed was doing he wrote Rock and Roll Jihad the book uh, did some songs as well he came to so, a local university here University of California Irvine where he played with a professor that he was a professor of history he was friends with yeah his and, name uh, was Mark Salman, Levine yeah Mark that, that exactly or Levin Mark Levine Levin so he came yeah. and they played the Infinity album and a couple of Genoan tracks and it was like a crowd of maybe, with this professor with, with this yeah, professor maybe wow, 100, 100 people at most yeah maybe, no I mean I remember I remember an event um, and Jay was there Jay Datama was there I think yeah. uh, John Alec was playing John bass John Alec was playing bass correct yeah. yep uh, I remember seeing him uh, on the East Coast at Harvard, and maybe 55 people showed up at the most. Um, but you know, and, and I think it, the, the interesting thing—he he still likes the intimate sort of crowd. That's why. That's what I meant by saying he is very humble because he just wants oh, to sit can, down and have conversations. Oh, he'll engage you in Twitter right now. Like if you tweet against him something that you know stands out, he will tweet back. He's at you. a right. movement-oriented guy, yeah. so he doesn't matter what size crowd it is. Like we yeah. were discussing in the last episode, you know, right. they play to crowds of hundreds, like they're playing to crowds of tens of thousands. Yeah. yeah. So when you're that kind of a mindset, you're 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 going for every individual you possibly can touch. It's the he's right now, but even so, in Pakistan, like you remember the uh, before social media. Mm -hmm. We had message boards, the technology message, so Junoon.com had a message board, Salman Ahmed would come on there, he would argue and discuss, and I, I went against him when, um, and when, you know, when we talk about religion and whatnot, um, when he released the rock, rock star and the mullahs, I actually was offended by that movie early on because coming from a you know, conservative background, but later on I realized that I was probably in the wrong and Salman was probably in the right. And you know we can unpack that. You know we can dissect that whole. Yeah, thing. I think we'll have to unpack right. that at a, at a later episode. But, but he used to come on the boards. He used to argue with us about all these things. He was touchable. He you was know, engaged. he was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So hey, here's, I, here's a story. Can I can I just interject? Yeah, this is a it. really funny story. Henry Fonda Theater, small black box theater. Uh, big names have played there, like Green Day and stuff. So Janon played there. I forgot yeah. what year it was. I but think it was uh, 01. Oh, maybe 01, but the full band was together at that point. Right. Now I stuck around afterwards. I wanted to meet the guys. Right. Mm -hmm. Ali Azmat comes out, and nothing against him, you know. It's in he's behind a gated area, gets in this Mercedes with this guy, and just gets away. And everybody's like, Ali, Ali, you know, trying to get his attention, talk yeah. to me, shake my hand, give me an autograph. He doesn't care. He's gone, yeah. right in a split second. <laughs> and then I I turn around. I'm like, now what? We're still on Ahmed, right? Right. And I was with a friend of mine. He's actually uh, played bass for Vital Science, Fessel Bolero. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he was he was with me, and then we're looking around, and he points at me way down the street on Sunset Boulevard. He's like. Oh, there's Salman. Salman had a, with his gig bag, his guitar uh, in there. Yeah. He's walking back to his hotel. Yeah. Uh, so we run up. Just man. walking on the street. Just walking on the yeah. street. Back that's to so the, sweet. So, you know, that, that's the kind of difference of personality. Mm. Not saying yeah. one is better than the other, but that was just a funny anecdote to what, sure. what we're talking yeah. about. Well, Fessel, you know, the, um, uh, the band that opened for them, Y2K, uh, we were actually, I was actually friends with them at that time. I missed that show for some reason. I think I was in college and studying engineering, so I wasn't able to get out to everything. But um, even in the 05 show, uh, a friend of mine, Fawad Heather, who was, who's, you know, an amazing songwriter, like one of the greatest songwriters, Pakistani songwriters that I know, who just couldn't, you know, he just did not break out. Um, he opened uh, for, his band opened for Junoon, and they put an excellent set. And uh, so Samana Pucha, like afterwards, like, yes, I had, and he's like, yeah, these guys are like really, you know, not into it, they're hardly talking to each other and whatnot. So there was like a lot of tension between them. You know what's funny is that if you look at the cover of Diwar, they look like they're upset about being there. You know, this, and they're not like looking at each other. It's like literally, and the song is about that, right? Like, Agai Beach Me Duri Ki Diwar. So, is, was Diwar their final album? Diwar their final album, as you know, but I think Infinity would have been an album. What, what about album. Ish, Ish came out before Diwar? No, Ish came out before. Ish yeah. came out right Ish is 2001. What was Ish's Diwar name in Pakistan? Because I know Ish is an Indian. Adnaz. And there was a compilation, there's a live album where we heard the Dore Junoon. Yeah. And yeah. then they uh, released a video album too, remember that? From Central Park and all that stuff. So so now as they break up, you know, um, Salman is doing all these things in the US. He's settled here, he's raising his kids. Who, by the way, I, I've met, um, and I actually, me and Zawar actually uh, talked to Sher John Ahmed, Salman's, uh, I guess he's, this, he's the oldest son. Amazing young man. Uh, what a brilliant mind, amazing artist. I, I really, you know, I've, we've met his wife, Salman's wife, and Sherjan, and they're just wonderful people. By the way, the, the, the drummer on the tour now for Junoon's reunion is friends with Sherjan and, you know, they yeah, played Taylor in the band. Oh, wow. Taylor, that's, okay. where they, that's where they met. So. Nice. Right, so right. He's yeah. a great drummer. He's, he's doing very well.
So yeah, so you know, I, I think what happened then is up to 2012, and this is uh, around the same time where you know Imran Khan's rise, you know, um, that the Imran Khan did this big old thing in Lahore in October, in October 2011, where you know PTM just became the biggest thing in Pakistan. Uh, so that's one of the reasons Salman probably moved back because that's when he started doing the uh, uh, Naya Pakistan song and all that stuff. Brought in Junaid Jamshed, brought in Nusrat Bhai, Nusrat Hussain, Shahzad Hassan, and all these guys, and he you know composed the Naya Pakistan song. You know what's funny is as those two vital signs, those three vital signs, Nusrat Junaid and Shahi, are working with Salman Ahmed. At the same time, there's this really beautiful behind-the-scenes uh, uh, Coke Studio video where uh, Ali Azman is doing Babu Bhai. Ali Azman and Rohail Hayat, the other half of vital signs, as you know, <laughs> are hanging out. out over there. Yeah. <laughs> So, funny. you know, I, I, I wanted to say a couple of things on kind of their exit, I guess, from the scene. Uh, for one thing, like I said, 2003 was that breakout year for so many of these, like, amazing bands that, that you know, we've talked about some of them. We're going to talk about some of them even more. Mm -hmm. We've got Nuri. We got EP that came out. Obviously, they were part of the Pe Pepsi Battle of the Bands. Otto, Otto was already well known by then. Fusion was coming out. You had Mizrab really, I think, release its first album in either 2002 or 2003. Right. And, and I think that that was a really good thing, right, for the scene, because there was a, I, I want to say, a golden decade of Pakistani rock music that was ushered in. And frankly, let's be honest, a lot of the reason was because of the fact that Janoon was that band that inspired so many of these other bands. <clears throat> I'm not saying they were the exclusive inspiration, but in many ways, I think they made it very you know, real. For a lot of these other bands to actually come onto the scene. I want to come back to this point because I got to add something that's, I think, very potent. Okay. But um, Should we put a pin on it or? Yeah, put a pin on it. But talk about reunion now. Like, you know, Junaid Jamshed was instrumental in the, in the reunion. I think um, when Ali Azmat's father passed away, that's when Salman actually connected back with Ali Azmat. He called him up. He says, you know, because uh, Salman Ahmed, and um, if, you, if you look at the interview where he mentions that he had given a call, his voice kind of chokes up too. I think he was also very attached to Aliyazma's dad. He respected him a lot. And when Aliyazma's dad passed away, I think this is like probably 2012 or 13, uh, when he started reconnecting with him. But it's still, it was a slow process to actually get him to from that point on till, mm. what, 2018 was actually when they finalized their, Came back uh, and their reunion. Had the reunion concert. Was maybe yeah. Junaid Jamshed ka bada hatta. And in the Karachi uh, reunion concert, Salman actually talks about that. And I always choke up listening to this part. He says that uh, Janay Jamshed had called him up before going to Chitral. Um, and they talked about everything and he said, um, do, do you know what he said? <laughs> Can you say it? Because I'm kind of... Janet said, um, I would love to see you and Ali play live with Janun. And then Salman never talked to him after that. Yeah, that was one of the last conversations uh, Salman Ahmed had. And it's on YouTube, actually, the Karachi uni reunion uh, concert that happened and they ended up playing the little Pakistan I think after that right so yeah he did someone did a little so Pakistan. yeah they had the whole crowd going and you know it was an ex excellent concert so a, a great tribute to a, a colleague and a friend uh, you know passed too soon but inshallah I think we're going to be discussing uh, Junaid Jamshid and Vital Signs in yeah. quite in depth I mean, I in, think in future episodes just so. between Junaid and Salman I mean, there was such a you know uh, one soul in two bodies that they kind of earned their own uh, episode on our podcast, just the Tem Jew. Absolutely. Them. And Salman Ahmed actually has great insight on Junaid's uh, transition, you know, what he went through uh, mm -hmm. after, you know, being a pop star, then being, becoming a religious figure. And even then, Salman Ahmed mentioned in one of the videos that Junaid used to call him up. And even with all the knot and stuff he was composing, he was like, yeah, what, what chord should I use here? Should it be a C major suspension 7? Or well, I did not even know that. <laughs> so, yeah, he, you know, they were, wow. he was still a, he was a musician through and through at, at, the, at, at the, the end. end day, yeah. And, you know, he was still Naya Pakistan. He was in there. And you know, see, everybody has a journey, right? So, uh, you know, that was his. And uh, so a great, great duo. Great yeah. duo. So <clears throat> what exactly do you think is bringing them back together? Um, you know, is it, I, I, I don't want to sort of like presume, but I mean, is it financial gain now? Or is it just like, hey, we just want to get back together? I, I don't know about the financial gain part. It could be. Yeah, that I mean, skeptical Ali Azmat, as well. Uh, right? will straight out say, yeah, well, I want the money. Yeah, me, sure. Know. Ali Azmat is just one of the most raw individuals. And that's why he's so lovable. Cause but you know, is, that, is that, I mean, Ali Azmat's solo career really 
out of the two of them. Like Brian kind of you know went back and in right. family life or whatever in New York. But Ali Azmat and Saman Emma, they were having solo careers. And Ali Azmat's solo well, it career was, was Ali just... Ali Azmat's career, that was actually something. It was commercial. Right. Saman Emma's career, solo career, was not noticeable. A lot of the recordings were being done in the U.S. anyway, you know? So we know, we know. I mean, without going into details or knowing all the details, we know Salman is okay. He's doing all right for himself. And yeah. Ali came from a different background. And, you know, they even talk about that in their drama serial when they did that. Mm -hmm. So we know Ali didn't come with a, you know... In, with that great of a background so with his solo career i think he did he did all right so the financial gain aspect of it i don't know maybe that's our daisy bun you know always going for the pressure for that could box. be something but <gasps> no, so, so that's what i really want to know right is like is it is it a particular moment in time right now with the fact that i don't know i mean what is it what, what exactly I, I think is it so, that because is Janun, them Janun represented something yeah. at, at their peak right? right they represented a a, a peaceful a middle path in, in a crazy world and I yes. think you're right. In like the world is as is today, with uh, a lot of strongmen leaders all around, mm. a lot of changes happening within Pakistan. Yeah. Uh, revolution, you know, yeah. uh, with PTI and Imran Khan. You know, hopefully, good things are going to be happening. But it, it seems like it's about time that the band got together and you know started practicing what they represented. I mean, the process of getting everything back together takes uh, some time too. And you know, like Ali Azmat is a, he's a writer. He's you know he just did his European uh, tour on his bike. And then he's you know going to China and all this stuff. So he's kind of wild out there. He obviously, probably get a, uh, probably hard to get a hold of. And Salman has his own you know activities. So it, it does take some time to um, put the pieces together. Um, but what I want to the sweetest thing for me about this reunion, and I want to get back to what you were talking about other bands and whatnot, how they were inspired. I think it was not just the bands and musicians that were inspired. You look at Coke Studio, Pepsi, and all these things, right? corporations, the people, the men and women running those corporations that are into music are Junoonies, okay? And the sweetest thing for me is back in the day, sh the performance used to be raw, right? You didn't have more than a bass guitar, one uh, electric guitar, Ashik Ali Mir on the tabla, right? And maybe Ali Husband will pick up a um, acoustic guitar. Now they're coming back with uh, they have Momo. Who's that? Omran Shafiq from Opre. He's Omran Shafiq played uh, with Ali Azmat uh, throughout the I know whole who that process. Is, <laughs> Kashan from Ismar, he's playing guitars in the back. Ashik Ali Mir is playing tabla, but his son Kashif Ali Mir is playing dolak at the same time. He was always playing tabla for them, right? He's always been playing tabla, but now his son is joining in. Uh -huh. Brian is there with this thing, Salman is there, and then there's a keyboard player, Imad Rahman. He's playing, and then you have this laser light shows in the bag with digital effects, everything. Backup singers. Backup singers. This is all <clears throat> the fruit of Junoon's labor. I really believe that because mm -hmm. every person in there is a Junoonie. Every person putting that stuff together is a Junoonie. And coming from the raw shows like the one we talked about in the last episode where, yeah. you know, in LA they play in front of like 150 people. They were performers. You look at the YouTube videos of when the Talash albums and they're playing in a, in a college uh, room. That's where they're coming. Nishtar Park video they look. Or American Express uh, Company Banquet or whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, look at where they're coming from. And now this is what they've earned. So, you know, this is, yeah, that, that's what's so yeah, sweet for me. If you've seen the visuals and the pr live production of the new reunion tour, it's definitely the what the band deserves. You know, what they've always had. Before it was just even, they didn't even have a light show, which is like a cheap thing to put on. They would just come on, lights turn on and lights turn off. And that was it. You know, so, even at their peak. But this is definitely, you know, the Karachi one, the visuals were just amazing. Yeah. The full... I mean, know, where did the first shows in Karachi? Or in Pakistan, there was no show like that? And that's another thing. Things have come up too. Things have changed. You know, Junoon, because of Junoon and my side? Well, not, not just that. Junoon, uh, and we'll, I know we're going to discuss this later in a, in a more in-depth topic, but Junoon was playing at a time where it was a political upheaval too, right? Where they were banned for a certain period. They couldn't play in their own country. Where uh, terrorism and the security so, instability. So imagine that nobody was playing. You know, not Salman just plays in a place where uh, you know religious fanatics come and storm the stage, getting banned by Nawaz Sharif and then Benazir Bhutto, people hating on him for this and that. All and that struggle, that. and now they're coming to this this amazing setup of a of a show. So Return of the Kings, man. Return of the Kings. It's amazing. I'm gonna. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen to me when we're out there in San Jose. I think something we can all agree on is that none of them were ever better than the sum of their parts. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, 
you could see one of them like have like a blip on the radar. Kind of like the Beatles, some, wouldn't you say? Some relative success here and there. I think Aliyah's solo album was pretty successful too, because you had songs like Not Enough. Which are still the first one, that, absolutely. For that time period, are still very successful. I right? think the. Uh, then at the end of the day, it's like anytime even Salman Ahmed was marketing himself as just Junoon, right? Like, there was this element where I always felt like, no. It's like, well, you know, too, in Salman's defense, he did not market himself as Junoon until way late. Like, Infinity was released under his name, Rock and Roll Jihad album was released in his name. So, Junoon 20. He Junoon called 20. Junooni. That was the difference. Yeah, yeah. When Junoon 20 came out, it was not even original songs, it was like covers of other people, renditions of other people. So until Junoon, Junoon 25 came out, that's when Salman actually put his own songs in there and called it Junoon. Other than that, he was not doing it. And Ali Azman actually had, did have a problem, like, you know, you're calling yourself Junoon. But, you know, he didn't really do that for a long time until, like, Ali Azman kept, kept rejecting the offers of reunion for a while. Salman Ahmed came after, uh, you know, went after him for, uh, you know, a lot of times. And I don't think we should understate Ali Azmat's success as a solo ar artist. I mean, he's had hits that a new generation that came up post Junoon know Ali Azmat as that artist. You know, and he's with, such a mentor yeah, to all of them. He's got songs in films. He's got you know drama serial uh, intro songs. He's got he was all over the place. He was doing quite well for himself. Uh, Umar Jaswal, uh, Ali Noor, Momina. These are all you know. He's mentored them. Salman Ahmed mentored Momina too. Yes, Salman Ahmed mentored Momina as well. I think he was um, his discovery. But I don't want to talk about Momina. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk and you know, I, I, I do want to, I do want to make a quick comment. Is that society has about no, it. I, I am actually... One thing... Momina is actually very cool. Uh, I'm going to just put that out there. So, right. Okay, so so one thing, one thing that I have <laughs> noticed uh, is... I, I do want to say <clears throat> that throughout the history of like sort of Pakistani rock music, alternative, whatever you want to call it, this particular genre... If, if you look at the overall kind of mix of artists that are out there, right, and it is a pretty diverse set throughout the history of like the 1970s onwards, um, you've heard of very little sort of incidents and stories of riffs and, you know, <clears throat> public sort of like backbiting each other. Oh, um, right, yeah. But you yeah. haven't really heard that too much, and I wonder if it's because. I don't know. I think it's like when you have a smaller subset. Yeah, it's like Junaid Jim Shit. It's like a family, right? You really have to be there for each other because nobody else is really going to have your back. The bigger, like the bigger you Salman are. Like break up and then they became best of friends forever. Right, exactly. Because like, they, they, they were small time still. You know, the bigger you are, the harder you fall. So. That's true. That's true. But I mean, I think there's something really beautiful about the fact that, uh, you know, we have a, a, a sort of subset of these artists who, by the way, I mean, arguably... Arguably, aside from Janoon, with Janoon, I mean, I think like Tika, Janoon is Janoon, it's, it's an anomaly in many, in, in many ways. But I mean, my senses, having been to Pakistan a few times, uh, and actually lived there as well, I, <laughs> yeah. I went yeah, to high school rub there. Rub that in our faces. I, I have I, not been to Pakistan. I, if you've been listening to these episodes, you would know that at least a couple, before, at, least a, at least a couple of the hosts here have never been to Pakistan, but that's, that's okay. Unki knowledge pir bhi behtarin hai. But the point is, that I, I, I genuinely see Pakistani rock the genre not quite as popular as perhaps some of the other like pop sort of genres in Pakistan. Which oh I yeah, it's, really it's not a it's not for mainstream. Mainstream is still it Bollywood. It isn't for the mainstream. Yeah, yeah. like and, you go to a even, Pakistani even you gathering, some, right. people would play Bollywood. They're not gonna play your bands. So even if you look at some of these videos of these reunions from Dubai to Karachi or whatever, you go on YouTube and look at these sort of like video productions that they've had, you see a lot of folks who are from older generations, right? Who are like 30 and above who are really coming back and kind of feeling the nostalgia and yet you don't really see that same sort of like you don't see the youth coming out in the same way and I wonder how or I mean maybe Junoon's not even you know disturbed by that I mean maybe they don't even care um, but <clears throat> I do wonder you know how are how are the how are youth in Pakistan right now like teenagers early 20s how are they going to continue to really feel that? And by the way, I do want to say, we are removed from Pakistan in many ways. So we appreciate the feedback that you have been providing us. Uh, we definitely want to hear from you on what your your thoughts on, what your takes are. Uh, we appreciate all the feedback, but maybe even give us some insight into, you know, what's going on in Pakistan, what your what your ideas are, what your what your perceptions are, uh, if you live there, for instance. Absolutely. Go to, go to our Facebook page, and we'd love to interact with, uh, with our listeners. Uh, you know, leave a comment and we're, we're watching, we're listening, uh, or send a private message if you want. But definitely, every, every bit of feedback helps. So a question for you guys uh, as we wrap up this episode. I know we're all getting ready, packing our bags, one foot out the door. Yeah. October 25th! Right. It's coming up, San Jose road trip. You San know. Jose! And so what, what song, if, if there was one rare song that they would play that they haven't played yet or in a very long time, what would it be? Man, you Adigo. know, it's a... They already did that. Which one? Uh, uh, they played Samal. 
And, uh, and Elias Mar talked about it. He's like, man, I, uh, cause somebody asked him like, what is your, you know, rare song or whatever. He's like, you know, we, we played Samuel and I was like delighted cause we never had uh, played that before. In, a, in so, like 20 years, he said, right? In 20 years. Right. So, but they man. didn't play that at House of Blues, I remember. <laughs> we were there. <laughs> How about, what's your rare song that you would like for them to see play? You know, um, so Salman Ahmed has done a rendition of this as well, uh, in, but, but it would be Khwab, um, you know, Khwab. tying it back to... They did, cousin, they that's did not Khwab. rare, though. That's every, they did it already. They did it in the Karachi one. They they did, but I mean, you know, they, but they don't, it's, not, it's not one of those songs where like, you expect to hear at a no, concert. No, no, pick you know something I mean? that they don't play. Pick something that they haven't yeah, played in a long time. Yeah, I... Uh, I know, I know what, you, what like you Lady guys Magic want. from the Lady first album. Magic. <laughs> no, I know, I know what song you all you all want. I, I have a they song haven't out. played it ever, but we've played it like every single thing that we do. It's Manika B. Manika B would be great. That's been one of our songs that we've always played at one. every show we've done. But for me, I would love to see them play Ghaflat. Oh, that is exactly that is what I was trying to look up right now. That's a, that's a mic drop boom man. right there. Yeah, that would just kill me, man. I would turn into a puddle. Iltija would be awesome. And it's not just, I mean, it is dark, but what, what the contrast, the beat is actually yes. quite up-tempo. Yeah, yeah. So it's like this, like, like 80s kind of, like, beat, right. but at the same time, like, the lyrics are, the, the concept is so dark. Beautiful. Man, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a matter of few days, and I'm losing my ish already. <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. Thank you, you guys, for such a lively conversation. Thank you for everybody who's listening. Zawar, play me out with something. Yeah, that's perfect, dude. <laughs> Salaam everybody. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Oh, hold on, hold on. So what? Nihira. So actually, you know, I, I do want to say, are we seeing everybody after October 25th and letting them know what the show was about and how we felt? That's a secret, man. What, what are you doing? <laughs> I want to make sure that I throw out that teaser, so stay tuned. October uh, 25th is a date that we head up to San Jose and we'll be talking about our That's one of those things where you say, hmm, and scratch your chin. Or, uh, Christian. Salam alaikum, Ibn. Alright, ya, khulafiz.